Hello and welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I would like to go through comparing and contrasting the three different types of muscle tissue. We've already talked about the three different types. There's skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. And now what I'm going to do using this little kind of a bulleted list is go through um, the similarities and differences between all of these. Some of the bare bones similarities we could talk about, we talked about when we talked about characteristics of muscle tissue, contractility, um, extensibility, elasticity, all of those. All three of these types have all those in common. So if you can't think of anything else when it comes test time, you can put those kind of things down. Um, the ones I want to talk about here, first we'll start with striations. Skeletal muscle has striations, or in other words, it is striated. Cardiac muscle also has striations. Oops. However, smooth muscle, as the name tells you already, no striations. it's smooth. And just in case you're wondering what striations are, um, here's my depiction of a skeletal muscle. They come in these long tubes. And as you look at the tube under the microscope, you'll see nuclei along the edge, and you'll see going crosswise these little lines. Those are the striations. So striated. Um, the next thing, luckily for me, is actually shape. Skeletal muscle comes in long tubes. That are not branched, just big long tubes. This one's really short compared to the way they should be. They're, they're very long actually. Um, for cardiac muscle, they come in this form, also tubes, but branch, they have branches. Um, and I mentioned nuclei over here with skeletal muscle, there's multiple nuclei in the skeletal muscle but there's only single nuclei in the cardiac muscle. And as long as I'm doing that, I should put in these striations that I told you were in here. So cardiac muscle has striations. So let me put the words on here. Branched tubes. For smooth muscle, smooth muscle has more of a fusiform spindly shape, tends to be thin on its ends and thicker in the middle, that's the fusiform. Um, and as I said, kind of spindly. Another thing about the smooth muscle is the fibers tend to be smaller than what we see, especially in skeletal muscle, but also in cardiac muscle. So that's the shape. The next thing is control. And what I mean by that is whether you can consciously control them or whether they're controlled without your need for conscious thought. The skeletal muscles can be controlled consciously but the cardiac muscle is not controlled consciously. You don't have to think to cause your heart to beat. And the smooth muscle is not controlled consciously. You don't have to think to get the food to move along your digestive tract. So skeletal muscle is voluntary. 
And by the way, it's not always voluntary. We'll talk about reflexes down the road, and those are not voluntary. They happen anyway. But you can control your skeletal muscles. Another example of a skeletal muscle that has both voluntary and involuntary control is your diaphragm. You can control your diaphragm to breathe in and out at will, um, but you don't have to think about it all the time to be able to breathe. So that's a skeletal muscle that's both voluntary and involuntary. Um, cardiac muscle, involuntary. And smooth muscle, involuntary. The next one, um, location. So where in the body do we find these different types of muscles? For the skeletal muscle, at least the majority of them are attached to bone. For the cardiac muscle, not attached to bone, only found in the heart. And for smooth muscle, the majority of smooth muscle is found wrapped around tubed organs, in the walls of tubed organs. And another place that I've mentioned before where we find smooth muscles is in the skin. The erector pili muscle is smooth muscle. The, one, the, mu the little bits of muscle that give us goosebumps. But again, the majority of it is what we're interested in, and that's wrapped around smooth muscle. The last um, way to compare and compra contrast these guys is um, innervation. And I'll make that a question mark. In other words, do neurons control these muscles? Do neurons attach to and send signals to these muscle fibers? In the case of skeletal muscle, the answer is yes, they are innervated. In fact, skeletal muscle requires innervation. Skeletal muscle requires innervation so much that if a muscle is deprived of its innervation because of damage to a nerve, for example, that skeletal muscle will atrophy and eventually the muscle fibers will die without that innervation. Your muscles need exercise. Um, cardiac muscle, no innervation needed. Cardiac muscle is autorhythmic. It sets up its own rhythm. It doesn't require innervation in order for that rhythm to go on. So what that means is literally, um, if you remember, what was it, one of the Raiders of the Lost Ark movies, where the guy reaches into the other guy's chest and pulls out his heart, and the heart's still beating in his hand? That would really happen in real life if you were able to uh, make it happen that quick, though I don't recommend trying it. Um, the heart does not need the brain to tell it to beat. There are innervations to the heart. What they do, rather than telling the heart to beat, is they tell the heart to beat faster or to beat more slowly. For smooth muscle, um, most are innervated. But unit smooth muscle is not. 
its control is similar to the control of the cardiac muscle. Unit smooth muscle is found, um, for one example, it's found in the digestive tract. There are waves of smooth muscle contraction that move food along the digestive tract. And those waves happen spontaneously, autorhythmically, just like in the heart. Um, and the nervous system can speed that up or slow it down, but it, it doesn't need innervation for it to happen in the first place. So in terms of innervation, skeletal muscle, yes, innervation has to have innervation. Cardiac muscle, no innervation needed. The heart's perfectly capable of contracting without innervation. Smooth muscle, most of the smooth muscles are innervated, but some don't require innervation. They can contract all on their own. So yes, no, and sometimes. And that concludes the compare and contrast for the three different types of uh, muscle tissue. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please feel free to contact me through email or through phone. And thank you once again for watching.